Canto 34. Ninth Circle, Cositas, Compound Fraud, Round 4, Judaica, The Treacherous to Their Masters, The Center, Satan. On marched the banters of the King of Hell, my master said. Toward us, look straight ahead. Can you make him out at the core of the frozen shell? Like a whirling windmill seen afar at twilight, or when a mist has risen from the ground, just such an engine rose up upon my sight. Stirring up such a wild and bitter wind, I cow cowered for shelter at my master's back, there being no other windbreak I could find. I stood now where the souls of the last class, with fear my verses tell it, were covered wholly. They shone below the ice like straws and glass. Some lie stretched out, others are fixed in place, upright, some on their heads, some on their souls. Another, like a bow, bends foot to face. When we had gone so far across the ice that it pleased my guide to show me the foul creature which once had worn the grace of paradise, he made me stop. And, stepping aside, he said, Now see the face of Dis. This is the place where you must arm your soul against all dread. Do not ask, reader, how my blood ran cold and my voice choked up with fear. I cannot write it. This is a terror that cannot be told. I did not die, and yet I lost life's breath. Imagine for yourself what I became, deprived at once of both my life and death. The emperor of the universe of pain jutted his upper chest above the ice, and I am closer in size to the great mountain the titans make around the central pit than they to his arms. Now, sitting from this part, imagine the whole that corresponds to it. If he was once as beautiful as now he is hideous, and still turned on his maker, well, may he be the soul of every woe. With what a sense of awe I saw his head towering above me. For it had three faces. One was in front, and it was fiery red. The other two, as weirdly wonderful, merged with it from the middle of each shoulder to, point where, to the point where all converged at the top of the skull. The right was something between white and bile. The left was about the color that one finds on those who live along the banks of the Nile. Under each head, two wings rose terribly, their span proportioned to so gross a bird. I never saw such sails upon the sea. They were not feathers, their texture and their form were like bat's wings, and he beat them to that three so that three winds blew from him in one great storm. It is these winds that freeze all Hositas. He wept from his six eyes, and down three chins the tears ran mixed with blood, froth, and pus. In every mouth he worked a broken sinner between his rake-like teeth. Thus he kept three in eternal pain at his eternal dinner. For the one in front, the biting seemed to play no part at all compared to the ripping. At times, the whole skin of his back was flayed away. That soul suffers most, explained my guide, is Judas Iscariot. He who kicks his legs on the fiery chin and has his head inside. Of the other two who have left their heads thrust forward, the one who dangles down from the black face is Brutus. Note how he writhes without a word. And there, with the huge and sinewy arms, is the soul of Cassius. But the night is coming on, and we must go, for we have seen the whole. Then, as he bade, I clasped his neck, and he, watching for a moment, when the wings were open wide, reached over dexterously and seized the shaggy coat of the king demon. Then grappling matted hair and frozen crust from one tuft to another clambered down. When we had reached the joint where the great thigh merges into the swelling of the haunch, my guide and master, straining terribly, turned his head to where his feet had been and began to grip the hair as if he were climbing, so that I thought we moved toward hell again. Hold fast, 
my guide said, and his breath came shrill with labor and exhaustion. There is no way but such stairs to rise above such evil. At last he climbed out through an opening in the central rock, and he seated me on the rim, then joined me with a nimble backward spring. I looked up, thinking to see Lucifer as I had left him, and I saw instead his legs projecting high into the air. Now let all those whose dull minds are still vexed by failure to understand what point it was I had passed through, judge if I were perplexed. Get up. Up on your feet, my master said. The sun already mounts to middle tears, and a long road and hard climbing lie ahead. It was no hall of state we had found there, but a natural animal pit hollowed from rock with a broken floor and a close and sunless air. Before I tear myself from the abyss, I said, when I had risen, oh, my master, explain to me my error in all this. Where is the ice and Lucifer? How has he been turned from top to bottom, and how can the sun have gone from night to day so suddenly? And he to me, you imagine you are still on the other side of the center where I grasp the shaggy flank of the great worm of evil, which bores through the world. You were while I climbed down, but when I turned myself about, you passed to the point to which all gravities are drawn. You are under the other hemisphere where you stand. The sky above us is the half opposed to which canopies the great dry land. Under the midpoint of that other sky, the man who was born sinless and who lived beyond all blemish came to suffer and die. You have your feet upon a little sphere, which forms the other face of Judaica. There it is evening when it, come, when it is morning here. And this gross fiend, an image of all evil, who made a stairway for us with his hide, is pinched and prisoned in the ice pack still. On this side, he plunged down from heaven's height. And the land that spread here once hid in the sea and fled north to our hemisphere for fright. And it may be that moved by that same fear, the one peak that still rises on this side fled upward, leaving this great cavern here. Down there, beginning at the further bound of Beelzebub's dim tomb, there is a space not known by sight, but only by sound of a little stream descending through the hollow. It has eroded from the massive stone in its endlessly entwining lazy flow. My guide and I crossed over and began to mount that little known and lightless road to ascend into the shining world again. He first, I second, without a thought of rest, we climbed the dark until we reached the point where a round opening brought in sight the blessed and beauteous shining of the heavenly cars. And we walked out once more beneath the stars. <laughs>